We want to get to our top story this morning, and that is that audio recording that surfaced from the 90s that sounds an awful lot like Donald Trump, the presumptive nominee, and his camp now denying that he's the voice behind the call. But the reporter who was on the other end says she has no doubt it was Trump. NBC's Jacob Rascone outside of Trump Tower here in New York. Jacob, good morning. What's the latest? Jeff, good morning. That reporter tells NBC News that Donald Trump pretended to be his own publicist, admitted it, apologized for it, and is now lying about it. This is the presumptive nominee. Surrogates are making the rounds, telling everyone it's time to move on. The year was 1991. Donald Trump facing a barrage of negative press about his divorce when supposed spokesman John Miller steps in. I'm sort of new here. A candid phone interview with People magazine boasting about Trump's personal life. Frankly, uh, he gets called by everybody. He gets called by everybody in the book, in terms of women. The reporter is Sue Carlswell, who says Trump later admitted to her it was all a joke. There's no doubt in my mind that he apologized to me and that he made it clear that he was the man on the tape. There's just no doubt in my mind. It's the voice is on, instantly folks. familiar. Well, I, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. You understand that. You understand that. John Miller quickly became the top trending topic on Twitter. Tweets like, show us John Miller's birth certificate. And has Paul Ryan decided to endorse John Miller yet? But fact, Trump himself now phone. denies so all of it. No, and I, I was not me on the phone. It was not me on the phone. And it doesn't sound like me on the phone. Like His Trump's surrogates making the rounds, calling the taste a distraction. At some point, We've got to start concentrating on what's important. The issues that face our country right now are just monumental. The Washington Post uncovered the tape from a source. Carswell tells NBC Cynthia McFadden it wasn't her speculating it might have been Trump. And if I didn't give the tape to the Washington Post, who did? So you're saying you, you I think, think Trump is behind letting this go. Why? Why does Donald Trump do anything that he does? Carswell didn't offer any evidence that Trump was the source, and the campaign didn't respond to specific questions about that, only saying that the man on the tape is a, quote, bad impression, end quote, of Mr. Trump. Jeff? Jacob Roscoe in here in New York. Jacob, thanks. And we're going to break all of this down. Kevin Sheridan is a Republican strategist and was communications director for Paul Ryan during the Romney Ryan campaign in 2012. Ari Melber is, of course, MSNBC's chief legal correspondent. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Kevin, I want to start with you and this tape. Really bizarre situation. And I mm -hmm. guess the question becomes we are heading into a general election. Is this the type of situation that swing voters, general election voters, actually start to care about? Well, it doesn't seem to matter to his voters, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we, it do, what does it tell us new about him? We know that he was uh, a playboy in the 80s, that he was, his, well, now we know he was his own publicist. That's, uh, <laughs> that was interesting that he was, had the time to uh, uh, sideline doing that. But look, this is, this, is, this is an unforced error for him, mm -hmm. but it remains to be seen whether or not it actually matters to uh, voters. He didn't need to lie about it. He could have just admitted what you know, most people already knew that he was doing this back in the 80s. I wonder if the lying is the problem. Yeah, and you work with Paul Ryan, of course, as communications yeah. director. Yeah. Not only does this impact the voters, does this impact Paul Ryan? And knowing him as well as you do, is he the kind of guy that will dig his heels in on this, or will he ultimately endorse Trump for party? Well, not over this. I mean, look, Paul Ryan, has he's been put in a very difficult spot, obviously, as the Speaker of the House. He's got members in his party that are on all three sides of whether or not to be for or against or still considering Donald Trump. Uh, and to get behind him, he's buying, he's buying them the time and the space so that they can then get behind him. And they have to see how Donald Trump responds and you know, how he ultimately campaigns. And this doesn't help, honestly. All right, Donald Trump has made, made a big deal out of the fact that he is self-funding his own campaign. Two campaign sources now telling NBC News he'll aggressively raise funds for the general, may even pay himself back, ultimately. Do you think that will impact the voters at all? I mean, he's made such a big deal out of the fact he doesn't need those outside campaign donations. I think on the money, the big question is, do people see something that he promoted as a centerpiece of his candidacy, that he's independent, he has yeah. this money, he'll spend it, makes him different. Now in the general election, we're learning he's going to raise, as you say, hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? That's far more than anything in the primaries, which completely blows up the idea that he's independent. At the end of the day, though, this, not unlike the spokesman thing, which is more weird and stupid than it is important, <laughs> are questions that people look at and they say, okay, Donald Trump seems different. Is he different good 
or different weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think, is important because you cannot run right now as being the same as Washington politicians. So different can be good. Does it take away that different aura, though, if he starts to work with the establishment? I, I think it can. And I think when you look at the money, if you see that he's also raising it from the same old crew, then I think voters who thought they were going to get something very different say, oh, the closer he gets to Washington, the more he looks like Washington and works with Washington, then what's the big difference? And is he risky in other ways? At the end of the day, people have to know when they put someone in the White House, can they believe what this person says? And quickly, I want to get both of your reactions to this. A Wall Street Journal report yesterday that essentially said the Clinton Global Initiative, the Clinton family's charity, was helping to facilitate tout commitments that ultimately benefit uh, a public company, and that company had ties to the Clintons' friends. Uh, legally, a lot of folks are saying this doesn't cross the line, but Ari does it, and is it a problem of optics for the Clintons? It can be. Legally, based on the reports, there is nothing automatically mm -hmm. against any law that they basically gave some money to a for profit entity instead of a non profit entity. CGI, the Clinton Global Initiative, has done a ton of good work in Africa and other poor places around the world. I don't think anyone denies that. That's why President Bush, Laura Bush, Condi Rice, a lot of people have celebrated it. The problem here and the question here is, was this focus on good works or was that part of some larger branding to hand out deals or favors? That never looks good. And politically speaking, Donald Trump is going to be able to make the case that we've been uh, suspecting for a long time that the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative have been kind of a slush fund for his uh, campaign um, operatives and you know the people in the Clinton orbit for years that they kick money over to their friends that they you know this is all this uh, kind of icky thing and you know this is not a new story but once these stories come to uh, to light I think you're gonna hear more and more about it I think Donald Trump is gonna make it a big issue in the campaign yeah gives and Republicans an opening exactly gentlemen right. thanks so much for your time this morning we could be Thank here you. all day couldn't we Kevin Sheridan, we could. Albert, <laughs> thank you very much you. appreciate it <laughs>